Okay. Okay, I'll read a poem and a cu couple of letters and do an improvisation. <coughs> the first poem is called <coughs> The Opening. I walk into a vast space, a sky of gray, cool stone, a basilica with the odor of centuries, light passing through the prisms of static-eyed halos and folds of shadowed robes, an altar among the echoes of ghostly footsteps, a cloth of maroon velvet patterned with gold stars and crescents, the color of flowing rivers, veins with ruptures, a flood of moons among unknown statues. A woman enters, eyes of summer, flashing clearings and forests, sun, rain, and lightning, her smile, her teeth, her tongue, evoking night's blossoming nectar. Her garments are a revelation, a mix of earthly jewels, vivid moss and lake, a bodice of shimmering leaves showing soft breasts, sweet as creamy honey, an opal-colored dawn shading into the peach-sugared light of sunset. We come closer, touching and knowing blindness. A mouth of kisses, a lush hot rain, her nearness a heavenly eclipse. Hands showing an intimacy with the wind, rippling the fine meadow hairs of my skin. Rising oceans crash against the cathedral, spilling salt and wetness across the floor. The heat of glass melting into pools of indigo. Dizzy epiphany and fragrant collapse. Okay, here's a letter to Daniel. Dear Daniel, I heard about the blood clots in your lungs from Sandra when I phoned today, and of course I was concerned, and I hope you're getting better, and that you're receiving adequate medical treatment. Sing high clear notes without fear like Georgia O'Keeffe, and while you're at it, float out of the hospital window, high up into the sky towards an enormous purple orchid beyond the clouds, hovering like a helium balloon, a purple orchid with an aromatic cent center in subtle shades of milk, egg yolk, and pearl that changes into a burgundy-colored orchid when you enter it. Then you will pass down a wet corridor into a room in which musicians wearing loose tunics and trousers in hues that match the external orchid petals pass the time on tambourine, flute, and drums while concealing their faces behind masks of cloth covered in patterns of vines, stars, and stylized peacocks and lions. You will remain with them, unsure of their race or gender, since even their hands are concealed in velvet gloves the color of silk and fire and cat's eyes. Then a giant silver basin will suddenly appear, filled with water sweet and fresh from both the Himalayas and the glaciers of Antarctica and New Guinea. You will be submerged gently by two of these musicians, a woman with long copper hair, bare of clothes, like a sky without clouds, will dance before you while waving a human skull with its hair still attached, and the teeth of the skull will spread the smell of sandalwood, permeating the room, and everyone will bow their heads and silently bless you, and you will be miraculously cured, and then you will change into a panther with the wings of a swan, and will rush off into the air, roaring and spraying fire and embers from your mouth on the lands below you, causing crops to be nourished and the soil to be replenished, and vast temples made of marble to be erected in your honor, with courtyards containing fountains that shed tears into the rippling silver mirror of the pregnant moon, while more and more giant orchids appear in the air everywhere. Talk to you soon. So I sign myself, your friend hidden in a thimble in a pumpkin patch, Eric. <laughs> 